impact on your health is sponsored by Dennis J. Courtney, MD, director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002 for Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AM Impact on Your Health, heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney. I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, a very good friend of mine, a treasure, a literally a treasure of medical knowledge and information and, and, uh, and tutelage, comes in the form of a gentleman who um, I'm going to be proud to bring to you as my guest today, and not just today, on Wednesday. His name is Dr. Rory Kerr. He is back in the saddle, and I just felt that I'd love to bring him aboard to talk about one of uh, his most expert topics, which is on thyroid disease. So look, uh, Dr. Kerr is going to be with us all day today talking about it. He's going to come back on Wednesday to talk about it some more. It'll be your primer on thyroid. I know I've spent so much time, but the, this gentleman is without a doubt the most knowledgeable expert in thyroid disease that I know. Turns out he's also my mentor when it comes to how to treat this disorder, and all this will be revealed to you uh, as we pass the day today as well as Wednesday. So you don't want to miss Dr. Carey's return. You don't want to miss the opportunity to hear what I feel he's just the most expert on, and you don't want to miss the opportunity to have a chance to call up if you'd like to to ask a question or make a comment uh, over the course of these two days. So that number, and you never forget it, of course, it's always nearby, is 412 825 6262. That's 412-825-6262. I'll give the number throughout the hour. He's back, and we got to bring him here aboard with us and launch him and bring him back into the mainstream of, uh, of, of being able to treat all you folks as he once did, Dr. Rory Carey, with us today after our first break. Okay. Uh, let's see. Calendar-wise, uh, we're clipping, well, this month, by the way, it's going to be over pretty doggone soon. Uh, we're moving in the last month of June. Uh, it literally ends on Wednesday. We're going to flip through and uh, move into July starting on Thursday. And, of course, moving into a holiday weekend. Uh, Weather-wise, I guess uh, it's going to be cool for a couple of days, and then things will be heating up by the end of the weekend. At least that's how I remember being it being said to me this morning. Uh, the uh, Fruit of the Spirit uh, uh, product, which we carry, 29 bucks. Uh, great taste and stuff. You'll hear it mentioned uh, on the spots done by Deborah Ray for us. Uh, come on in to get the books written by her. Deborah Ray, uh, in collaboration with John Young and Aida Reyes, uh, two medical doctors, and Deborah. I always say that's about equal to the one, and that one is uh, well, still not equal. They need three. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we launched a product here with you back in November of 2009. This great taste and stuff to start your day. 14 biblical fruit parades, alkalinizing minerals from the Dead Sea, uh, herbs. Talk about some herbs. Frankincense and myrrh. When have you heard those two last included in any um, uh, lectures that you may be taking? And also there's veritrol. So I'm going to get the dichotomy here. The ancient and the most well-known. Uh, anyway, it tastes so good. One serving, one ounce serving, equivalent to five servings of uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, the number to get it, 1-800-442-3793. That's 1-800-442-3793. You can also order it up off of the website at fruitspirit.net. That is fruitspirit.net. I uh, hope you enjoyed our discussion on Friday with John Kerr. A uh, gentleman who owns the company called Healthy Perceptions. Uh, he was extremely knowledgeable on uh, the products that he not only manufactures and represents, uh, but the ones that have been pretty much setting the trend 
Uh, you hear about them, you've seen them on your television, but I think you've learned a lot about air purification and water purification through the products that this company, Healthy Perception, make. Perceptions make. Uh, the brand name, uh, the banner by which these products are sold are called Aclare, A-C-L-A-R-E. And uh, I highly recommend, if you ever come to visit me in my office, you'll notice a distinct, uh, not pungent, but a uh, just a background aroma, and that'll be what uh, the air purifier in my office uh, is putting out. You, when you open the door, you always know you're walking into a clean room. It's got that fresh smell. Uh, that's because, uh, well, he was nice enough to send me one of his air purifiers. Um, the um, also the water pitcher I use it on too. So a uh, whole bunch of products. Go to healthyperceptions.com. You can also give him a call. Uh, I'm sure he's still going to give you that, that two for one um, price uh, uh, that he mentioned on the air with us on Friday. Uh, the number at uh, Healthy Perceptions, and they're one hour behind us, so you're going to have to wait a while to call them. 888 uh, and mention that you heard it by here on our radio show, and I think the discount will still be in play for you. Also remember last week, uh, Willie Jean spent a day with us. That little devil is up to her normal tricks. <laughs> she's uh, she's out and about, folks. She doesn't have a book in the offing just yet. Uh, she's still working off her old, but it was certainly nice to be able to visit with her. Uh, also would like, and, and uh, I, I don't have the book yet myself, but I have talked to some of my patients that do have it. They enjoy it. The book written by Dr. Bernardo Lapayo, a 108-year-old uh, gentleman turning 109 uh, a month uh, from now in August of, uh, of this year, August 17th, as a matter of fact, uh, his life story. Uh, and he has another book in the offing. It's not out. The one that's out right now you can get at this website, www.ageless. Live more. That makes sense, huh? Age less, live more. Store. Got to put that store on the end of it. But if you don't include it, you won't end up at the right web website. Double double triple w dot age less, live more store dot com. For those of you who don't uh, have access to a computer and want to use the uh, the <laughs> I guess it's the old way, huh? Call them up on the phone. I can believe it that, that that may be the old way now. Four eight zero. 831-6229. That's uh, 480-831-6229. Uh, request is going out for all those who uh, are listening to me now on the Internet. I know there's a bunch of you out there. I got a lot of emails. Turned out that you tipped me off to a problem we were having with our audio. And uh, I'm, I'm asking, and uh, would you please respond as you had uh, so vividly responded when the audio was not up to snuff. You let me know about it. Now, I think we've got it corrected. At least my techie tells me we have it corrected. I listened to some online shows from the archives that were recent shows, and um, the, I, I, I think it, uh, it's functioning perfectly well now, but I'll leave it up to you, the listener, to decide. If you do listen to the streamed up live show or you listen to archive shows, Please let me know how this show is uh, coming across to you in terms of the audio component. Uh, it turns out that evidently it was a, was a, was a thing going on where uh, once we cut to the guests, their, their voice level was really low. I've got this very loud voice, and everybody said, well, we're hearing you just fine. And then when the guests spoke, uh, it was just muddled and, and muted, and could you do something about it? Well, I think I have. I'm asking you to tell me if I've, if I have. And, uh, or if I have not, so I'll be looking for those emails today. Uh, you know how to get me because you got me very well uh, with the last emails on the subject. Those who are listening to me streamed up live. Now, what I don't want to do is delay uh, getting with our good friend Dr. Roy Carey any longer. Uh, Dr. Roy is uh, in the wings waiting to come on board. We're going to be talking about thyroid disease. You are an endemic area for it. Uh, Lord knows I've mentioned enough. Well, let's listen to the expert himself, Dr. Roy Carey, back in the saddle again and with us Monday and Wednesday of this week. Be back in a moment with Dr. Roy.
just got the word. The company's new health plan has a $5,000 deductible. We have to make sure nobody gets sick this year. Remember what those doctors spent this cost for last year's cold and flu? Well, oh, sorry. Sorry. I gotta go. Love you. We can do this. We can cut the fast food lunches, soda. That's a lot of sugar. We could all take that evening walk. And hey, I heard a program about fruit. Fruit of the spirit. What did they say? One ounce. The equivalent of five servings of fruit with herbs and minerals. We could add some to our breakfast protein shake. Fruit of the Spirit's unique whole fruit puree. Fruit of the Spirit contains fresh fruits native to the Holy Land and alkalizing minerals from the Dead Sea. With no added sugar, Fruit of the Spirit's unique product from five years of work from science-based nutritional experts. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. That's 1-800-442-3793. 442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough that no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. Does this confusion sound familiar to you? Give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we have made some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to AM Impact on your health. AM Impact on your health for each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. Of course, I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you as I am each and every one of those Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But today, this week, uh, both today and Wednesday, very special guest, very good friend of mine, and a, a virtual treasure, as I've already mentioned, uh, when it comes to medical knowledge and expertise that uh, we in western Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania are extremely lucky to have. A uh, gentleman uh, away from medicine for a while, back in the saddle again, going to spend some time with us talking about but I consider him to be, of course, as my mentor, an expert above, extra, expert extraordinaire on the thyroid issues. We're going to be talking a lot about them today and Wednesday. Uh, his name is Dr. Roy Carey. Let's say good morning to him. Welcome aboard, Roy. Thanks good, for coming aboard with us this morning. Good morning. How's everything? Everything is going well. Now, you, we're going to start off by asking you to tell us, uh, now you're back practicing again, how is it that those, especially those that live up in the northern part of the of the listening area, could come to see you. You're strategically positioned to take care of their medical needs. How can they contact you? I'll be asking you this multiple times, but this is the first. How can they contact you to schedule some time to come in to see you? Uh, two offices. The main office is clear in Greenville, which is a little far for most of those people. <clears throat> but I use that as a phone number: seven two four five eight eight two six. 100 2600. Uh, but our adjacent office is in Porterville, which is uh, I think 36 miles from the point of Pittsburgh. Uh, straight line and no lights uh, from the time you pull on 79 and get off at of 96 and turn left into the first building on the left. I don't think anybody could get lost coming you can't to that miss office. That tour. I've never been to Greensville, but I've been to Porterville. You can't miss it, folks. So uh, those of you north of the city and Heck, if you're in Middle City, my goodness, it's 36 miles, certainly no difficulty in getting to you, Roy. And I'll ask you, any any website information you want to give us that you have? Well, my website is not very active at the moment. So it's, get oh, okay. Some things on there. I need to put a video together about this. Uh, I have two of them now, but they're way outdated. There's so many things happened in the recent uh, four years that makes thyroid uh, treatment so much uh, easier, and we now have proof of what I've been doing for 20 years of using the T3 uh, to help people that are on Synthroid, which doesn't work very well. <clears throat> all right. Well, of course, we're going to get into all that. This issue of thyroid disease, I consider you to be the guru of thyroid. You know, it wasn't, uh, well, it was long ago, yet it wasn't so long ago. 
had a conference down at uh, Sheridan, the south, uh, the south side um, there, and uh, I asked you to come as one of my uh, featured speakers. I said, you've got to talk to us. Back then, that was, I think, about eight years ago now, back then, uh, about thyroid. And you did uh, take, to the, take to the podium and for an hour and a half lectured us on it. I knew you as a guru then. I still consider you the guru today on this subject. Tell me, uh, is this, how is it that you should become to be recognized, as what I think is accurate, as the guru? Why have you devoted so much of your attention to it? Uh, because you truly have, Roy, taken this one on as a special as a special mission. Why so? Well, it's an interesting journey that I uh, actually did all my education at the University of Pittsburgh and uh, finished in 69 in ear, nose, and throat surgery. And in that field, we do a fair amount of thyroid surgery, and I started looking at these patients and saying, well, why don't we treat these medically and look into that more thoroughly over the years. And uh, met uh, Dr. Dennis Wilson at one of our meetings. I'm board certified in ear, nose, and throat, of course, but also in environmental medicine. My certificate number is 32 in the, in the world in environmental number medicine. Number 32. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should tell you something, folks. All right. So uh, what I'm looking at is, and what we'll, you'll hear from me on this uh, program, is that the environment, the disaster that occurs that makes the thyroid go down. And it's a far more prevalent with three or four things that cause this uh, in ways that uh, most people don't recognize. In, in the field, the endocrinologist uh, had lost to how to even explain some of the things. And uh, about four years ago, we got a new test that proves what I've been doing is right. I've been doing it for over 25 years, but uh, using the TC therapy almost exclusively, and uh, find that uh, we now have the reasons and we have lab tests to prove why we need to do this. All right, so let's uh, sort of have a beginning. Um, would you say, because I'm certainly seeing it, and I would really yield to your, your expertise on this going for so many years. Um, thyroid disease in terms of western Pennsylvania, okay, I mean, I look at this as uh, running rampant around western Pennsylvania. Do you consider thyroid disease uh, to be something really indigenous to us, something that we, unlike other areas of the country, have, or are we no different than anybody else from your perspective? Well, so we talk about the various uh, minerals important. Iodine is a key one, and uh, really what we call the Goyer belt. Uh, most iodine comes from the sea when we eat seafood, and the Great Lakes is uh, fresh water, and therefore we don't get when we, uh, 100 years ago, when we ate our seafood from the Great Lakes, people had goiters the size of footballs in their neck uh, because they had no iodine in, in, the, in the water and in the seafood. But then uh, Morton's put iodine in the salt that was in, in about the 1920s, and then that doesn't happen anymore if people use enough salt. But uh, the other pollutions include fluoride, chlorine, and bromine in our water sources, and the lack of selenium in our soils in this area. We don't uh, get the selenium, and so we'll try to explain why that's terribly important. And then mercury is the other disaster, and anybody with two fillings has two fillings too many in terms of the amount of mercury that comes out, and that interferes with this particular step that we're uh, treating by using all T3 in the therapy instead of the simpler T4. So you'd say that now, but indigenous to our area, and thanks for mentioning, because I, I, I do try to bring that issue up, about the goiter belt. Are we, we're we known all over the world, I say, and, and, and the scientists in Japan, if you mention goiter belt, they know what you're talking about. They, they know exactly that you're talking about western Pennsylvania. What other states is it included in just well, western Pennsylvania? All of them along the Great Lakes. All uh, of them along. Since we uh, had our seafood 100 years ago from the Great Lakes, and there's no iodine in the, in the seawater. In, in lake water, fresh water. Uh, now we have it in our salt that's uh, not near as prevalent, but that's not enough for good therapy. In, in fact, the uh, iodine that we use now, we use much higher doses than we thought you could think reasonable because we need that to help displace the fluoride that most people have in their water or in the toothpaste. You only buy toothpaste without fluoride, and that's a metabolic poison that interferes with the iodine. If you look at the atomic table, uh, fluoride's on top of the column of the halide group, which includes chlorine and bromine. And everybody has chlorine in their water and using fluoride in their water, and those are poisons. If you think of what are we using for, we use them to kill bugs. So we're just big bugs. And so we're uh, harming our thyroid, uh, not fatal, but uh, really a problem. And well, I heard you 
and, and we've, it's just so appropriate to hear it from you. One thing, okay, indigenously we're in a greater belt area. We have no iodine in the soil, but I heard you absolutely take off and move into your environment. Number 32 on the certificate, all right? right. Number 32, <laughs> uh, you moved right into your environmental medicine uh, uh, component of, of your knowledge base, and you started talking about other things. I heard you say mercury and dental fillings, and evidently you feel they play an extremely strong role in uh, in the incidence of thyroid disease that we have. you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Well, if you look at the test that people do, the TSH is not even a thyroid test. It's a pituitary telling you the thyroid to make hormone, and those tests are a bit faulty, and the levels are way too broad. Uh, the upper limit uh, is that thyroid quits working, and that's a common form that most anybody can diagnose and treat. The TSH goes up to try to make the thyroid make more hormone. We abbreviate everything in medicine. That means thyroid stimulating hormone coming from the pituitary to tell the side to make more hormones. It's above uh, four, the lab says it's uh, too high. You should think about treatment, but we don't think it should be above two, or, and the, even the endocrinologist now put it at 2.6. In England, they just raised it to 10, which is ridiculous because they save money to not treat people in the city system. Uh, and then the T4, we measure that, of course, and that's the level of the hormone produced, but that's not the accurate hormone for problem. It has to convert into T3. That requires selenium, and if we have a deficiency of selenium, that's easy to fix. It, it completely uh, restores the function, but mercury blocks selenium. These metals, such as the fluoride and uh, things that block the iodine, have the same uh, exterior structure of the one electron, and, and mercury has two electrons, and so does selenium, and so all the other essential minerals are blocked by the mercury. So selenium is essential to convert the T4 into the T3 activation form. And now one more step is that the body can make reverse T3. In other words, it's mirror image and backwards, and it doesn't activate the cell. <coughs> Each of our cells have receptors to accept the T3 to tell it to metabolize oxygen and the food we eat. And there's where the weight loss comes in, in the depression and malfunction of the brain and all the things that happen when the thyroid is below normal if we don't make quite enough of the active T3 form. Uh, I kind of illustrate this with electrical plugs. We need about a 10 to 1 ratio of those. Now, the one other thing that produces that is starvation. So back uh, <laughs> several hundred years ago, the Central Europeans uh, had very poor food supplies, and the ones that starved to death didn't have children, but the ones that survived had the protection of this mechanism where they made more and more reverse T3 to block the effect of the active T3, and <clears throat> their metabolism would go down, and they would not lose weight. They would burn the fat with this <clears throat> mechanism and uh, enable them to survive by shutting the thyroid down. Now, in America now, we don't starve to death, but everybody's on a diet that so has a little bit overweight, and it's, the body thinks they're starving, so the metabolic rate goes down, so it's impossible to lose weight without some thyroid support. Now, it's, uh, all physicians think it's evil to consider treating patients with thyroid to make them lose weight. Well, it's not to make them lose weight, it's to make it possible. Uh, if you go on a diet for a long time, you're virtually starving your body in this mechanism you didn't eat to survive. And the mercury makes it uh, worse also. So there are three things that make this occur. Less selenium, mercury blocks the function of selenium, so in any form, and uh, on a diet, you are starving your body, and therefore this reverse T3 will elevate. This is the newest test. I've been using it about four years. Just heard about it uh, again with a newsletter from Dr. Jonathan Wright in April of 2009 that confirmed the need for it. And so we're proving why we are able to treat this with this testing, which most doctors haven't even heard about yet. Now, you, uh, and you mentioned this reverse T3. We probably should elaborate just a bit because I think you just brought an interesting perspective to the table, which is we're in a constant diet mode, uh, especially our lady folks. They're always very weight conscious. And by going on these diets and sort of uh, mimicking the starvation realm that this mechanism was developed innately to, to protect you for, you increase your amount of reverse T3. 
you explained it to me as my mentor, and you truly are my mentor on this one, as a set of brakes. It puts a set of brakes on the thyroid. Consequently, you, your metabolism is going to go down when you would like it to go up. And it's just the dichotomy of saying, if you're going to go on starvation diets, your thyroid better be a healthy thyroid or you are going to have problems, not be improved by your dieting. You're going to be made worse. Fair yeah. enough said, Roy? Exactly. Now, you can trick it. I teach people if they don't have a major thyroid problem or this test is not too far out of balance, then they can trick it by dieting for a week and then don't diet for a week. Back and forth, then you, you don't go into a complete starvation a mode. Trick. A trick. A yeah, trick. It. <laughs> a mm -hmm. trick up his sleeve, folks. Mm -hmm. You'd expect the sly one, Roy, to know a trick. Let me ask you about that uh, uh, with respect to thyroid disease. Uh, I, I'm finding, and I think that you'll probably mirror this, but I, I think we should mention it, um, women. Women seem to be the ones that really manifest this and so clinically represent it, where men, although they do, do so in such minor numbers as to almost, they almost find it uh, miraculous when I find a male that I have to treat. Are you finding this to be a, a, a disease of women and not of men, or do you find it not to be that way? Well, men perhaps aren't recognized as much. They're not as concerned with their health, not as concerned with their weight. And women have, uh, what is it, six hormones that are fluctuating all over the place every month that uh, drive us uh, doctors crazy to keep them balanced, but the thyroid is the key hormone. It's the master hormone that all the other hormones have to have it to function from the adrenal to the ovaries and testes and so on. So men don't quite have those swings and the, the difficulty with them. They have a different fat configuration, so you don't have near as much trouble. On top of that, they won't admit it if they do have it. So uh, women are more health conscious when it comes to the doctor, and of course their weight's a, a big factor. So we see say, at least 10 to 1, if not 20 to 1, females over a male. Yeah, way overstacked in, in mm -hmm. favor of the women having the clinical manifestation uh, as opposed to the men. For whatever reason that is, uh, I guess your explanation is as good as any. Now, how about this? Maybe you've heard this. Well, I know I have. If I've heard it once. I've heard it a thousand times. We get to the discussion of uh, thyroid here in the office, and then I hear, and I want you to comment on the woman telling, it's usually a woman telling me, oh, thyroid. You know, my doctor thought I had thyroid problems once, and he went and got the blood test, and I'll be doggone, uh, but he and I both looked, and they were, all my thyroid tests are completely normal. So, no, my problem isn't thyroid. Would you please make a comment? That, that happens over and over and over again, where the blood tests evidently uh, are falling in the normal range. And uh, the conventional medical community, if you don't have one of those parameters out of whack, you're, they, they would never consider diagnosing you as thyroid disease. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, they all do a TSH, and if it's within normal range and normal range, as I mentioned, even some have up to 5.5, then even it's 10, we should start thinking about uh, some treatment if it's above 2, in my opinion, and uh, uh, that's a valid statement. But that's not even the active hormone. In fact, it's not even a thyroid hormone. It's a pituitary telling you thyroid to make hormone. Now, a secondary type of condition can occur with the, the TSH going too low because of the effect of uh, pituitary, but that's extremely rare. Thank goodness, because it's hard to, to fix, because if that goes down, other hormones are down too. But the next that test would be a T4, and most doctors would do that now. But again, that's not the active hormone. And it, it, if it doesn't convert into reactive T3, you might as well not have it there. And most doctors treat with synthroid, which is pure T4. And you have to have T3 to help the activation and flame and, and no morphine and so on. And uh, so there's the problem. They look at the two tests and think they've done no, they're not done. They haven't even started yet to look at the active T3 and maybe the reverse T3 and then compare the ratio, and that's the critical part, is the ratio of the active total T3 over the uh, reverse T3, that fraction, usually at least 10 to 1, and I see people with 1 to 10 or 1 to infinity almost, and no wonder the, the thyroid mechanism is not active. Even though they have a normal gland, normal pituitary, and normal lab test that most doctors do, they're not doing enough. So that, that's really what your, your criticism is. Not that they're looking at labs, but they just don't have enough labs to be able to make such a bold and uh, really all-encompassing statement. When you say, hell oh, no, the thyroid's healthy because I took those two lab tests, man, you've made a giant sweeping generalized statement which can consign this poor person to a lifetime of just feeling lousy all the time. 
I think the main reason that we have these mechanism was God made it so that we would not starve to death in times of famine. And there are four ways to slow the thyroid down. You know, usually only one way that makes it too much for to go and just go for rest. But the, these four ways slow it down. And the final one that we just discovered is that the verse T3 enables us to survive a starvation and, uh, period of time in our family history or in our own life, you know. So it's not as important now as it was a century ago that it's still happening because there are so many people needing to die. All right. So when a woman comes in to see you and um, and uh, and you're suspecting thyroid, as I think I know you do, and like I, I usually do, uh, and lab tests uh, aren't necessarily what you're going to gravitate for, although when you get them, and we'll talk about it, the lab tests that absolutely have to be obtained uh, in a moment, but... I believe that uh, you use a different system, as I do, on making the decision on whether you have a person that has thyroid disease or not. How do you make that diagnosis? Is it labs? Do you use labs or not? No, we, we look at the history mainly and also a basal temperature. Berta Barnes was probably one of the best books back you know, years ago and taught us how to do the basal temperature. The old way was to put people in the chamber and actually measure their oxygen consumption for six hours, which is a crude testing. And when the sort of bones discovered the basal temperature is actually more accurate than that. That's real simple for anyone to do. Just put a thermometer under your axilla and uh, armpit in the morning before you jump out of bed when you just get rest totally and uh, measure the temperature. And if it's subnormal, uh, you've got a thyroid problem most likely. Um, the temperature range, most people would think 98.6, no other than it should be 97.8 up to 98.2. And anything under that is subnormal metabolism that caused usually by the thyroid insufficiency at the cellular level. And the laboratory tests that most people do don't uh, agree with that, and therefore you're missed, and doctor pats you on the back and say you eat too much, and you're a closet eater, and you're not active enough, and you don't exercise, and you obviously eat too much. Now, people can have their metabolism 30 to 50 percent below normal uh, with a normal lab test of the T4 and the TSH, and they are therefore not burning their calories. And you have no energy and there are financial difficulties and miscarriages and low libido and uh, too much weight and their voice is worse and there's uh, 66 symptoms in Dr. in Dr. Bonnie's book. 66 symptoms from low thyroid. And uh, in your experience now, which is vast, 25 years plus in working with this disorder, um, do you find that uh, of the 66 you've got Normally, people would have a, a bunch of these symptoms. They have a few of these symptoms. Oh, most people have perhaps five or more. And I have a question there with 20 in a list, and I have people score themselves in zero to five. And if you add them all up, you can have a high score of 100 with 20 symptoms of five plus. Uh, I had one lady that had all of those, and with treatment, she went down to zero in about um, three months of careful monitoring. Oh, yeah, I know. Right. Zero on all of them, including in fertility, when you see a child on the way. Now, you, you picked the, and you shared the, the, the questionnaire with me, and it's certainly something I use in my office. 20 symptoms of the 66, you rate them uh, 0 to 5, and so what's the total that uh, starts to catch you in the questionable zone? I mean, how many, how many points do you have to have out of that as 20 symptoms, uh, where 5 is the maximum score, 0 is no? This person doesn't have the sensation at all. What are some What are some of the 20 that you picked, by the way? And tell us about the numbers that uh, that you're using to make the decision as to whether to treat or not. Well, uh, most of the time I'm looking at the total numbers of symptoms. If people have four and five, they need a careful investigation. In fact, one's enough to look at. Uh, so my best starts with cold intolerance or morning fatigue or just uh, being tired all the time. That's your big two, huh? And mental, uh, forget the old short-term memory loss, uh, constipation, the slow pulse, the pulse is a good guide as well as the basal temperature, uh, dry skin, hair loss. Uh, well, eyebrows is an interesting one. Uh, <clears throat> yes, you, uh, you lose hair and, uh, and the lateral part of the uh, eyebrow, the lateral third. Uh, and mental things like depression, in the female things in irregular periods, uh, miscarriages in the early uh, eight, ten weeks, uh, infertility in the first place. So a woman doesn't ovulate in the thyroid works right. Okay, uh, 
just looking at a person's face, puffing with the face and eyes, uh, feeling the glands. Now, there's an important, we need to do a physical exam if it's lumpy or enlarged, then we need a sonogram and other studies like that, and maybe even a scan. But uh, the, the physical symptoms are so characteristic of the overall person's uh, uh, physical exam. It's very important at least to stop the thyroid and look at the swollen legs and the other things people get. So that, uh, that's pretty rough. Wow, I've got quite a few of those, 20. And uh, you'd, you'd say, hey, you don't have to have all 20. You don't need to have a few of those. And especially when you see the, when you see the number five put next to scoring any one of those, that is uh, an eyebrow raiser on your part, isn't it, Mark? Because it sure right. isn't mine. Right. You know, so you don't have to have all 20. But if you have one or two with fives on them, and, uh, and the other ones aren't necessarily even registering, that's certainly enough to get to the next step, which is this basal body temperature. Um, you say 97 point uh, what? 97.8 up to uh, 98.2 uh, should be in that range. And most people with uh, a degree or so below that, some even two degrees below that. Uh, and uh, women who are menstruating need to do that in the middle three days of their menstrual uh, flow because they get a more accurate test. You know, there's a certain... Uh, Variation with uh, the menstrual period. All right. Uh, real quick question, and, I, and I, will you take questions, Troy? By the way, because uh, people are going to want to get at you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you will. Uh, well, one quick question for me first. Um, we're now in the realm where it's it's almost. I think you can be arrested and put in jail if you have a mercury shakedown thermometer, Troy. I mean, you can't get them anymore. They don't make them, and they're relics. And I do think there's a mercury police that'll come to your house and take you away if they have you have one. Well, be careful if you do have one to shake it down in the bedroom over the bed. Don't break it. If you break it, the amount of mercury in there is enough to poison the five acre lake. And it's about the same amount in a large filling in your mouth. So if you have that in your mouth, it's a liquid at body temperature and it vaporizes into your body. And the vapor is more important than the toxic in the mercury itself. You can probably swallow that much mercury not being a hazardous. But if you ever break a slumber, do not vacuum it up. The vapor off the vacuum would be enough to poison the whole house. There's number 32 certificate talking at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Metal medicine coming in. What about the um, uh, the, the newer style thermometer? Because everybody that I talk to says, I have this uh, this thing that I shoot off the back of my mouth or in my ear. Mm -hmm. uh, are they are they valid? Do they give you uh, well, temperatures? It's harder to do it under the axilla. Now they do make one with a mercury uh, instead of mercury having alcohol in it. And the one problem with it is they don't stay up like a mercury thermometer, you know, you have to shake the mercury thermometer down. The alcohol one drops quick after you take it out, so you need to read it. You have to take it out from under your armpits. So the electronic one, how would you get it under your armpits, and that wouldn't be very reliable. So if I want to have the alcohol internally, and it usually looks over, so uh, they don't look much different, but the problem is they'll drop quick when you take it out, so read it instantly. Okay. The old mercury thermometer will stay put for hours, that's why you have to shake it down each time. All right. Now we got. I got somebody knocking the door, trying to get in here. Why don't we let a questioner in? Come on in. You're with the great Dr. Roy Carey. Go right ahead. Hello. Ah, you gave up. You gave up too soon. I should have. You should have listened. I said I was coming. To, I was coming at you. All right. Why don't we do this? Um, let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Roy about uh, this diagnosis comes up so easily with the basal body temperatures. There are so many approaches to treating. We're going to talk about some of those and, and as to whether they're helpful, not helpful, potentially helpful. We'll get into that, too. You're with the great one. We'll be back in a moment. Have you been to the doctor lately? Was fatigue top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's through the spirit. The blessings of through the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit puree product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but through the spirit, help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Through the spirit, a blessing. 
your good health, fruit of the spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793. For your good health, call us now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. You become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television radio... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah the, the caller called back, so he's on the line waiting for the break dance. Okay, well, good. Right to him. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, Rory, came back. Okay. This confusion sounds weird to you. Center for But we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Hey, good morning and welcome back to AM Impact on Your Health. Uh, here on this Monday version of the show, special guest that he is, personal friend and just guru of, uh, of thyroid disease, number 32 on his environmental medicine certificate, <laughs> if that doesn't say it all. He's been around for a long time and he's brought a lot of illumination to a major problem. We're talking about one of his most favorite areas, which is in thyroid disease, and you're going to learn so much today and as well as Wednesday. You don't want to miss the Wednesday show. We did have the caller who left us early come back. He's with us now. Come on ahead. You're with the great one, Dr. Roy Carey. Go right ahead with your question. Great. Thanks, Dr. Carey and Dr. Courtney. Uh, this, is my, this is Jeff, a massage therapist. I've called you before a couple times before. Uh, what was the name of the book that you guys are referencing that has uh, all this? Sort of Rhoda Barnes. Go ahead. Name of the book, Roy. The name of the book is uh, Thyroid, the Unsuspected Disease. There's a lot more recent books, uh, one by David Bronstein, Brown Steen, calling Overcoming Thyroid Disorders, and uh, a more later one probably is uh, Mark Starr, excellent book, but he, none of these authors have the final answer with the reverse T3 lab test. It's much more recent than even their knowledge of this, so it's hard to find this in print yet. Uh, we hit the internet, and I did have the website there that some further research has shown it, but even that didn't have the right ratio. It needs to be at least 10 to 1 of the total T3 over the reverse T3 on the lab testing. Some labs still don't even do that test. That one hospital right in my area that, that won't even do it. I have to send people to UPMC does it. Uh, so uh, it's even hard to get it, and most doctors aren't even aware of this yet. But it's the final notch in. Uh, explaining why we uh, need <coughs> to have the thyroid carefully managed by people who experience what we're doing. And the treatment is a bit tricky because it's the active hormone we're giving, the pure T3, and it, uh, it once you get the amount up, the reverse T3 drops off. And I liken it to a Toyota without a brake. That wouldn't be a good thing. <laughs> so we do need the brake, and it's God's way of uh, slowing us down. All right, uh, Broda Barnes, by the way, a little bit of uh, a minutiae on Broda Barnes. Broda is actually a male. I thought it was a woman. A woman. Broda is a male. <laughs> I yeah. don't know where that Broda comes from, but uh, but that's just a little bit of minutia. He has absolutely uh, got a great book there and uh, get a copy of it. Thank you for your call. Uh, Courtney, I have one more question. Sure. Um, as far as um, iodine levels, um, can you, is, there, are, is there iodine, like if you were to juice raw organic vegetables, do it? An adequate supply of iodine for that, or does it have to come from secret sources or ah, help? Or? I'll tell you, Roy's got an opinion on that, on iodine. Why don't you go ahead with it, Roy? What do, how do you feel about the iodine issue? And Can you supplement it? Do you have to supplement it uh, through specifics, or can you get it from fruits and juicing alone? It's very difficult to get from uh, foods, especially vegetables. Uh, it's not in our soil. Uh, to get it mostly from the sea and uh, even uh, sea salt, doesn't have enough, so you virtually, uh, I think, need to supplement this with, a, with an oral supplement. Uh, we use up to even 50 micro, uh, micro, uh, micrograms now, and start low and build up, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to start with kelp for a while because some people get ill from taking it because what it does to displace the fluoride 
out of the atom uh, and makes people ill to have that fluoride circulating. So start low and then build and so maintenance does. Uh, I find it a little silly, you know, uh, Dr. Bernstein develops a odor roll he calls it uh, with the, both the iodine and anodine at a reasonable level. And uh, a couple of companies have put selenium with it, which makes a lot of sense. But I, I find that uh, it's better to just take a good multi that has both selenium and iodine and uh, all the other minerals that, that you need for other disorders like diabetics need the vanadium and chromium and those aren't even a lot even though they kind of minerals. You almost need to get a good brand through the physician or chiropractor's office. I do find the chiropractors are more into this than most medical doctors. Oh, they absolutely are, and uh, probably though juicing alone is not going to get you there, at least okay. in my opinion, okay? Great. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Great question for the, for the great Um let me ask you this, uh, with respect to uh, uh, the labs, because you keep, you've keep thrown out a number of them, uh, you don't need the labs to make the diagnosis. You've been quite clear about symptoms, ruling the day, and basal body temperature. And we now know about the, the levels of temperature that will make this uh, diagnosis a, a completely an easy thing. Um, but with, before you start your treatment, it is imperative, as you've now mentored me on, to get a number of lab tests. Can you at least spell out what all the lab? There's five of them, I think, when you consider. It. What are those five lab tests that that you just have to have before you start treating? Well, we start with a TSH, a T4, and then we get a uh, uh, <coughs> a free T3. Now uh, that's not free. It costs more than the regular one. But what we mean by that, it's the available hormone not bound to a protein. The uh, thyroid hormones bind to our serum proteins and are unavailable for use. So the old fashioned total T4 and total T3 um, <clears throat> wouldn't be used except now we don't have a free T reverse T3. So we have to do that ratio with a total T3. I didn't used to bother doing that. I could. I used to base my uh, um, treatment on a free T3 below 3.0 or 300, depending on whether it's decimal places placed. And uh, the lab goes down to 2.2, but that's usually as inadequate. <laughs> then we need <clears throat> the um, thyroid antibodies we haven't talked about. You can be allergic to your thyroid, which is uh, really dumb. I tell people the best thing for any allergy is to eliminate the allergen. Well, if you're allergic to a cat, you can throw the cat out. If you're allergic to milk, you don't need drink milk. But uh, how do you do that with your thyroid? Well, uh, the easiest way, actually, we do by giving you enough hormone to shut down your pituitary TSH. And then it's almost like the thyroid is not there, and that will reduce antibodies. We also see a marked correlation with celiac disorder with thyroid antibodies. So if we find that, we have to eliminate the uh, gluten uh, in our diet, which is real tough. But wheat and all grains have that gluten, and that's, we've had some remarkable cures of people that do that carefully, and then the antibodies disappear, and then you don't require any more medication. Uh, we'll save the other things. Also, always do a selenium level <coughs> and a magnesium level. I've almost stopped doing iodine levels because it's almost essential to go on an iodine supplement uh, because iodine is important for other things like breath masses. Uh, lumpy breaths go away in a few months on adequate iodine therapy. And uh, that's a whole other uh, story we have to talk about at some point. Um, and just uh, fill in the gaps of all the needs for these mineral supplements. Yeah, well, especially involving the breast and iodine, that's a link mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make some other time. Yeah, so um, just, to, just to summarize then, it's TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and total T3 uh, to do that ratio, and then thyroid antibodies. It's thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase antibodies uh, that you need to evaluate the thyroid properly. Uh, so mentioning those antibodies, should we uh, just make a mention about um, some hyperthyroidism states? Talking about Graves and Hashimoto's, I'm just throwing out these medical terms because it really will complete the entire realm of what hypothyroidism is. Because you can have a hyperactive plan, couldn't you? And sometimes start out that way, but 
usually what happens with these hyperglands is they ultimately become hypo down the road. Could you spend a little bit of time talking about the thyroid antibodies and the effect that they have on the thyroid gland? Try to keep it simple. Uh, if you become allergic to thyroid, which is a dumb thing to do, but it happens, and uh, the thyroid often I look at it as being irritated, and so it puts out more hormones for a while, and then often it burns out eventually, and you you're actually destroy the gland function with your antibodies, and therefore it drops low. In the meantime, you're probably hyperthyroid. That's a dangerous condition. Fortunately, it's rare. And God made these four different ways to slow the thyroid down, but uh, once it's uh, too active, uh, there's only about two practical solutions, and that is to remove a good portion of the gland surgically, or there's a drug that slows it down, tapers all, but it doesn't work forever, and then you often have to destroy the gland by radiation. And since the thyroid takes up iodine, you use a radioactive iodine and give a certain dose, and it destroys the gland function. Oh, they say they try to do just enough, but it's very hard to measure. And it's pretty tough. It just, uh, but it is just, necessary. I mean, it, you have yeah. to absolutely slow yeah. down that gland. Yeah, well, that's very dangerous you can die from that. You don't die from hypothyroidism very often, except you wanted to. You wanted to. <laughs> very very you well put. Very with well. With hyper, you do, and that's a dangerous condition. You need good, good endocrinology medical care, and uh, it's a tough one to treat. And people that try to do that naturally... Uh, we have some people that want to do everything naturally, and it almost can't be done. Uh, except I've had a few absolute cures for the whole thing by watching the gluten diet. So I checked everybody that comes in with the elevated thyroid antibodies. Then I looked at the gluten sensitivity testing, and the blood test for that's not reliable. You have to do a genetic test in, on stool for that. So a whole other ball ballgame was looking at that side of it. But um, it's important to do that testing from the word... So, a person might have been hyperthyroid years ago, and that's almost enjoyable. It happens in many teenagers. They're hyperthyroid and healthy and skinny and ideal, and they eat like anything, and they, uh, it's a nice way to be. The brain works great, and you're going through college, and then all of a sudden, with the pregnancy, you get into the antibodies. That's probably one of the triggers, having a foreign body in your abdomen for nine months, the challenge. And that's when people get into difficulty. Postpartum depression is almost always a hypothyroid state, not a psychiatric oh, state. These words of wisdom coming from you. How about out there? Anybody's ears just perk up with that kind of those kind of pearls coming at you? By the way, Roy, you do have another call. If you want to take it? Yeah, that's true. Hey, come on, the story. You're with a great one, Dr. Roy Carey. What's on your mind? Good morning, doctor. Hi. Um, I had a question for him again with um, the iodine subject. Sure. Um, if I'm on the armor thyroid and I want to get back on taking iodine, is there a, like a, be a better time to take it? In other words, do you take it separate, like space it out from the armor, or doesn't it matter? No, it doesn't really matter just so you get it in. But in, in many ways, if you're taking enough armor to suppress your TSH, you almost don't need the iodine for that purpose because you're taking enough medication which has the iodine already incorporated in it done by the animal. Oh, okay. Uh, so sure. it, it is less important except for other conditions such as your lumpy breast. And I put everybody on it for that reason. I've had people who have a lump this in three weeks, and it usually takes three months, but it's just almost shocking they have it disappear. And that was confirmed by the lady the gynecologist on the breast sex. And so it's a, probably a big preventive for cancers of, of many organs, too. Um, and which one do you recommend, um, the, the older Lugols or the um, Iodorol? Or well, the Iodorol is nice being a tablet, but even just in uh, a multi-mineral with, uh, with uh, all the essential minerals is a better idea. Uh, instead of taking, uh, I don't, don't not the iodorol concept, Dr. Bernstein brought that out to give both the selenium and the adequate iodine and iodide, but uh, it's important to get all these other minerals also and to take it as a single pill is expensive and time consuming and a bit of a nuisance, so you can now find a good multi mineral with everything in one big pill that you have to take three or four days because it gets pretty big. Uh, but the timing is not critical. <clears throat> one thing about timing, well, let me get into that, is when you take your um, armor. Tell me when you take it exactly. I take it about 6, 6.30 in the morning. Okay, on an empty stomach? Yes. Okay, there's a whole bunch of nonsense in party therapy, too, and that's one, one of it. The only use in the morning because the armor in temporary if it even works, it only works about uh, seven to eight hours. 
And everybody that saw him that time, they would get dead tired by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which they take it at 6 in the morning. And the simple thing is, take it twice a day. Yeah, I and do. You, mm-hmm. And you can probably even use the same dose twice a day. If you're on 100 micrograms of synthroid in the morning, it's, it's working. And uh, then at two, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, if you get tired, it kind of proves one that it's working during the day, but it doesn't work all evening. So you don't often go to the same dose. Now, you need to yeah, work on a diet. Um, I take 60 in the a.m. and then 60 milligrams around 2 p.m. That's an excellent routine. So okay. now that is if your arm is working. Now the point about that that it's four fifths T4, just like the synthroid, and only one fifth T3. And if you have this reverse T3 defect, that seldom works good enough to completely uh, resolve the problem of hypothyroidism. It's a good start. But uh, everybody likes to be natural, and, and the armor is a natural product coming from the pigs now. But it, it is sometimes inadequate, and that's why you need the reverse T3 and the total T3 lab test done even while you're on that to see that you have the right ratio. Okay. okay. And um, one more question. Um, I know, Dr. Courtney, you've been recommending the Cytomel exclusively. Yeah. And I wanted him to comment also on that. Oh, you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Don't miss Wednesday. We're going into the whole thing, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, great. We got a great last question. We got bongos in the background, Roy, signaling our time out of here today. I'm going to say to you, you will come back Wednesday and promise to talk about this T3 stuff, won't you? Right, I'll come from the Portland office. It will be 45 miles closer to you. <laughs> okay. You're going to be talking to us a little closer than the Greenville. You don't want to miss Wednesday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney with the guru himself, Dr. Roy Carey saying so long for an impact on your health.